I've been looking at gold for years, and to me, that hasn't sunk in enough where I believe this is a new normal. It is the new price point that we're looking at. It is where we're at. So by virtue, it is the new normal. It is what we're witnessing. Can it sustain and hold this area? Can it move higher? Can it find support, say, at uh, 2,600, which is what I believe should happen. So I'm saying the gold will be very sensitive to the rate cut. I believe that if it is a quarter percent, 25 basis points, that's been factored for the most part into pricing. However, we could easily see almost anything happen. The Federal Reserve's interest rate decisions play a crucial role in determining gold prices, more so than those made by other central banks like the Bank of England. Over the last seven U.S. Fed rate-cutting cycles, gold prices have increased six times in the following six months, with an average gain of 7.9%. Experts believe that if low interest rates, a weak dollar, and strong central bank demand persist, gold prices could rise even further, especially amid ongoing geopolitical tensions. With decades of experience, Gary Wagner has become a leading authority in gold market forecasting from a technical perspective. Wagner notes that gold will be highly sensitive to the Fed's upcoming rate cut announcement. While markets seem to have already priced in a 25 basis point cut, he suggests a 50 basis point cut could spark a significant rally in gold. Investors are expected to closely monitor this decision. Today's record gold prices were driven by rising expectations that the Fed might cut rates by half a point instead of a quarter point at its September meeting. According to the CME's FedWatch tool, the probability of this increased to two-thirds, up from Friday's level of 50%. Wagner highlights that gold is trading above key moving averages, a bullish sign that points to positive momentum in the market. Bloomberg intelligence strategist notes that gold prices have demonstrated notable strength rising 84% since 2015, when the Fed began its tightening cycle. This could pave the way for gold to reach $7,000 by 2025. Now, let's dive into some key insights from Gary Wagner's recent interview. Before we continue, please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell for timely updates. Thank you, and enjoy the video. It's gold's going to be exceedingly uh, sensitive to what the Fed announces when they conclude on Wednesday. The key right now is that it's considered a certainty that there will be an announcement by the Federal Reserve to cut rates to some degree on Wednesday. The question is whether or not they will cut by 25 basis points or 50 basis points. Those odds, and this is according to the CME's FedWatch tool, have been dynamically changing. And this morning, for the first time since I have been watching all of this unfold, we saw the probability of a 50 basis point rate cut exceed the probability of a quarter percent or 25 basis point rate cut. So gold will absolutely be sensitive. My sense is that current prices have factored in A, a rate cut, and B, a rate cut of a quarter percent. And so I'm not convinced that we won't see gold take off if the Fed cuts rates by 50 basis points. And that's going to be what traders, investors, market participants are going to be kind of glued to their to their screen or to their television watching the Fed announcement in a couple of days. So I'm saying the gold will be very sensitive to the rate cut. I believe that if it is a quarter percent, 25 basis points, that's been factored for the most part into pricing. However, we could easily see almost anything happen. And the reason I say that is the dynamic change in the CME's FedWatch tool. And what that tool is, that probability indicator that everybody looks at, is they're taking and gauging interest rate futures traders and what they're placing their bets on. And that's where the probabilities are derived. So right now, what it says is that futures traders, the professional money managers, those who are active in trading interest rate futures, now see the most likely outcome, a larger rate cut, a 50 basis point rate cut. And what you see on this chart is 
three lines. The short term is a 50 day moving average in green. Below that in a deep blue is the 100 and well below that is the 200 day moving average. The 200 day moving average is what we look at in terms of the long term view of a market because it's basically the moving average of a year in time. And the 50 day is what most people follow. And you can see that ever since the end of July, gold has traded effectively above the 50 day. It had been above the 100 as well as 200 for a tremendously long time. Let's go ahead and center this a little bit better. There we go. So you can see that in terms of the moving averages, gold is in what's called a classic um, bullish formation in which a pricing is above all three moving averages, 50, 100, and 200. And B, you look to see if there's a widening, let's say between the 50 and 100, you can see that how narrow it was here back in August and how that's widening. And that's what we call classic bullish alignment in terms of the moving averages. In his forecast, Gary Wagner envisions gold surpassing $2,600, drawing insights from Fibonacci extensions. He points out that while the current rally mirrors a previous one, the Federal Reserve's rate decision will ultimately dictate gold's trajectory. Although gold has reached record highs since 2015, silver has lagged behind. In 2011, silver prices came close to another all-time high, peaking at $49.21 per troy ounce on April 29th. Unlike the 1980s peak, which was driven by price manipulation, the 2011 silver surge was fueled by economic and geopolitical factors. Last week, silver made a dramatic move, jumping nearly $3, or over 10%. Despite this significant rise, the gold-to-silver price ratio remains around 84 to 1, far above the long-term average of under 50. This ratio has stayed elevated for over a decade. As gold continues its upward climb, Wagner hints that silver could reach the $35 to $40 range, but warns against expecting it to hit $50 anytime soon. Now, let's return to the interview. Right now, my target, very short term, is about uh, $26.25, with the potential to go as high as $26.50. That's based on the sidelines you see, which are basically a Fibonacci extension. So in other words, we look at this leg of the rally that began June 26, gold sitting at 23.55, up to the conclusion before it corrected 25.30. And so you take the dollar move that it has, and then you begin to plot from the beginning of the next rally, which we labeled as a wave three. In other words, after this price correction, and so a one-to-one -one move, meaning if this rally right here is equal to the current rally going on now, then it would be at least a one-to-one -one move. And we exceeded that last week. We're looking at a daily chart. This is Friday. This, of course, is the big move on Thursday. We could easily see it go as high as 26.25 to 26.50. But the caveat, the caveat to that statement is where gold goes midweek will really be tied to the announcement by the Federal Reserve. For example, no one believes this is a likely scenario if they announce that they're holding rates where they were, they're not going to cut rates. Now, Powell's already said that it's ready for a policy change, so nobody believes that's likely. But if that occurred, we would really see gold prices decline because we're factoring in a cut. If the cut comes in, as you mentioned, at 75 basis points, and I haven't heard that one, I think that's highly unlikely. Um, no rate cut, I believe, is absolutely improbable. Uh, 75 basis points is highly, highly unlikely. I wouldn't put any kind of odds to that. And so where gold goes will be really sensitive to what the Fed announces on Wednesday when they conclude their meeting. Let's look at it this way. Um, 
Recent action in silver in terms of going to a high have been around $33. Middle of 2011, gold breaks above a level it's never been at, $1,900 per ounce. We look at that now as inexpensive, but that was big. And at the same time, silver moved to $50. What followed after the all-time record highs came in in both gold and silver was actually uh, took a in a exceeding amount of patience because between the middle of 2011 and the end of 2015, we watched a slow and methodical price decline in both metals. Gold went from $1,900 of $1,020. So it basically lost half of its value. And then a rally began and it built steam and then went to multiple all-time record highs and closes at the same time, silver never challenged or got near $50 an ounce. And this is the recent high at $33. This is what I would look at if, if gold continues to rise, I believe silver will take out $33. If gold continues to run, silver could maybe challenge $35 to $40, but there's no indication currently that silver is going to make a run for its all time high at which is around $50. Investors have been closely watching gold price trends in recent months, and for good reason. According to Goldman Sachs research, gold has surged to new heights this year and is expected to continue rising, potentially reaching record highs into early 2025. How do you think the Federal Reserve's upcoming decisions will impact gold and silver prices in the near term? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications to stay updated with our latest content. See you in the next video.